Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I've had a viewer request a video um, on why Betty Broderick um, did what she did and what the reasons are behind her actions. First, I want to say I'm not a doctor or psychiatrist, so I'm not diagnosing her, but we can definitely take a deeper look into why she acted the way she did. First of all, I believe Betty is a narcissistic psychopath. Let's look into the traits of a person with NPD, which is Narcissistic Personality Disorder, and we will go into detail with my viewpoints and my own experience with a narcissist. First, a person can have narcissistic traits and not necessarily be a narcissist. Nine Symptoms of Narcissism 1. Grandiose Sense of Self-Importance preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love, believes that he or she is special and unique, requires excessive admiration, a strong sense of entitlement, exploration of others, lacks empathy, is often envious of others, and regularly shows arrogant, haughty behaviors towards others. Now, how did Betty show these traits? It was proven with facts in her trials that she harassed Dan and Linda, a.k.a. leaving lewd messages on their answer machines. Not just one or two. It was several, several times a day. Um, harassing voicemails, telling him she was going to kill him, arguing with Danny over the phone and the child crying and begging her to stop talking dirty on the answering machine. This is a form of bullying. Not only that, she broke into Dan and Linda's house on several okay occasions. She broke in and stole the guest list for their wedding. She would break in and she would tell um, Dan's maid that she was going to kill him. I mean, these are all symptoms of exploitation and bullying, which is what a narcissist does. Another example of exploitation is the way she treated her children. She dropped them off at Dan's house one by one. They were screaming and crying. They did not want their mother to leave them there. What mother in their right mind would do that to her own children. I couldn't imagine doing anything like that to mine. This was an attempt to take revenge on him. This was her way of getting him back. Listen, if Dan cheated, you know, I could understand being upset. I could. Her husband leaving her, yeah, I could understand being upset with that. But you don't drop your children off screaming and crying. The man had a right to leave her. He wasn't going to be forced to be married to her. I wouldn't want to force anybody to be married to me. And I sure as hell would not drop my children off screaming and crying. Okay? No. There's no excuse for that. It doesn't matter what a person does. You don't leave your children at a doorstep of their father's house. Come on now. Come on. There is absolutely no excuse for how she treated her children. She put them directly in the middle of her and Dan's issues. She told them that their father didn't love them anymore. And she would try to discuss the affair with her eight and 12-year-old sons. No, that's none of their business. That right there in itself is exploitation. She did not care if she hurt her children in the process of getting revenge against Dan and Linda. It doesn't matter what a person does. They do not deserve to be treated that way, especially the children. They are the ones that suffered more than anyone. They not only lost their father, but their mother. And I am sorry, but children love both parents nine times out of ten. They love them both. And when you talk bad about the other parent in front of the child, you are telling that child that the other half of them is bad.
And that's bull and it's wrong. There's no excuse for it. None. It doesn't matter what was done. Those children did not deserve that. They didn't. Narcissistic rage is another trait of a narcissist. They don't just get angry. They get crazy angry, full of rage. How dare you leave me? She told Dan's maid she was going to make Dan and Linda's life a living hell or she was going to kill them. Driving her Suburban through his front door, she refused to agree to any sale price of their house, the Coral Reef house. So Dan went and got a court order allowing him to sell the house. She refused to show up. So she tried to burn down the Coral Reef home and drove her Suburban through his front door with her children standing there watching. That is narcissistic rage. And not only that, she murdered them. I mean, that's abuse. That's the ultimate form of abuse, to murder somebody. You can't just bust up in somebody's house and just shoot them and kill them. You can't do that. And then, oh, well, I'm the victim. That's also another trait of a narcissist is the victim mentality. She showed that so much, especially after she murdered them because she reached out to the media and tried to give her side of the story and show that she was the victim. Why do you think she done that? Because she knew she was going to get ready to go to trial. So she wanted to reach out there to all the media and everybody that watches media, which is everybody, and give her side so that their mind would be tainted so she could, she thought that she could win her case or she could get away with it because she threw out that victim mentality and she was um, already going to the media. So she tried to beat the system by doing that. That right there is evidence of narcissism. There's no excuse for murder, period. There's no excuse for any of her actions. None, none, none. But that's definitely show signs of, like I said, narcissistic rage and the victim mentality. She showed a lot of that. But she's not a victim. She's not. You know, you can't help what other people do to you. All you can control is your response. And it's best to let it go. Man, she was getting $16,000 a month in settlement. But that wasn't good enough for her because she was entitled to more, which is another narcissistic trait. She was entitled to more. She felt that she deserved more. Man, listen, I'd take my $16,000 and I'd let Dan and Linda be together. And I'd go on by my business. He bought her a house a I mean, an ocean view estate in La Jolla. What was that, like a six hundred and something thousand dollar house? I mean, come on, that's not a victim, man. That's not a victim. It's not. Narcissists also project. It's called projection. They blame you or try to put on you what they do. She claimed Dan abused her. Okay. He called her old, fat, ugly, boring, and stupid. Okay, her children, especially Kim, testified in the trials that that wasn't true. I would believe the children over her. They were there. They seen everything. Kim said in the trials that she threw a ketchup bottle at Dan. She dug her fingernails in him. She locked him out of the house. She kicked him out of the house. But it was a problem when he left. But she could kick him out. She could lock him out of the house. Um, she could throw things at a Dan. She could throw a stereo. And, but that was okay, right? Now, that was okay. And I don't believe that she just all of a sudden after he left became a narcissist. It, don't, it just don't happen that way. I believe that she's always had these traits. She was raised in a home where her family was rich. They had maids. They had all this. You know, they had all this money and everything. Okay? And then let's look into, well, she, she had nine children, or she got pregnant nine times. She had five. One died, and she had 
four abortions. Okay. You know, or she she worked while she was pregnant. She she was the main provider. You know, she put him through school. Okay, um, maybe that was to hold that over his head. Did she do that to hold that over his head? Because I don't see any type of love or empathy in Betty Broderick. I don't. To this day, I don't. I don't. A person that will go... And, and break into somebody's house, steal her daughter's keys, mind you, break into their house while they're sleeping and shoot them, that person lacks empathy. A person lacks empathy that drops her children off screaming and crying. If you can look into your children's eyes, drop them off when their father is at home and they're crying and begging you not to leave them and you don't care, that's not empathy. That's not a good mother. And then whine or cry. Well, I lost custody of my children. I wasn't going to get my children back. Okay. Well, what what would she expect the father to do? What would she expect Dan to do? Oh, well, okay. Well, you dropped the children off. Not caring if I was there or not. You know, they were screaming and crying because they love their mother and they don't want them they don't want her dropping them off. Any, any dad in their right mind would not give the children back. It just it just wouldn't happen. I wouldn't expect my ex-husband to do that. But, of course, I never did that anyway. I couldn't do that. It breaks my heart to see my children crying. What's the hardest part of disciplining your children? Hurting them, right? That's empathy. You love your children. You would never do anything to harm them. You love them. You'll do what's best for them. You do things because you love them. And the hardest part of disciplining your children is hurting them. Because my parents used to say to me, this is going to hurt me worse than it hurt it hurts you. And I was like, when I was younger, well, what are you talking about? And I'm, what are you? <laughs> no, it's not. And when I became a mother, it's true. It's true. It hurts you worse. But... Then, you know, Betty is claiming she's a victim, but yet she's dropping her children off when they're screaming and crying. I mean, putting them in the middle, just going in and murdering somebody, not caring. That's rage and lacking empathy and projection is all the things that she blamed on Dan and Linda. I bet you money, I can bet you that she did that. Because narcissists do that. I've dealt with plenty of narcissists. And they never take responsibility for their actions. And she still yet to this day. Well, wait. I retract that. She has recently said that she's sorry for what she's done. And the only reason I believe that is because she's getting ready to come up for parole again. I don't believe she's actually sorry. Because she wouldn't have done it. I mean... I could never imagine taking somebody else's life because they left or they got married or whatever the because she got some more legal paper. But really, honestly, the legal papers was because she wouldn't stop leaving messages on his answering machine. And when you leave a narcissistic person, you set up boundaries. And he would draw back when she would act like that. And that would just make her act more crazy because she wasn't getting a response. Narcissists want a response. And if you get mad or you get tore up or you get hurt, that's what they want. That gives them narcissistic supply. It gives them supply. I believe firmly, hey, I'm not saying that Dan is an innocent bystander or Linda, either one. If they had an affair, that's wrong. But still, that doesn't give you the right to hurt your children in the process and then claim that you're a victim. It, it don't work that way. No, no parent is going to hurt their children on purpose to get somebody back. And if they do, they're narcissists. That's how narcissists are. They don't co-parent. They do things to hurt the other parent. 
That's narcissism. That's the way it is. They're selfish. They're self. They are self-centered. It's all about them. So when she worked to put Dan through school, why did she do that? Because she wanted Dan to make lots of money. But then she threw it up in his face. Oh, well, um, I'm a victim because I had to work. Well, I had to work when I was pregnant, too. I mean, it's the way it is. Honestly, you know, you, you let stuff go. And she's spending the rest of her life in prison because she had to get him back. She told him, she told her, she called and told her children, well, it was either me or him. One of us had to die. She uh, made a phone call to a friend laughing because he was gurgling up blood. That's not funny. That's not a person with empathy. That's not a victim. A victim doesn't break into somebody's house and shoot another person. That's not a victim. That's not. According to a Los Angeles Times article, quote, a prominent psychiatrist testified, Broderick suffered from dual personality disorders. He also testified while she was depressed, she was not mentally ill. She suffered from two personality disorders, narcissistic and histrionic. He also said that unlike a person who is mentally ill, she could control her disorder. Her lack of compassion was apparent through her threats to kill them. She frequently stated to others she was going to kill Dan and Linda. She wouldn't get in trouble because the world would be better off. Quote, further examples of what he called histonic and narcissistic tendencies, such as throwing things at Dan, locking him out of the house, criticizing him in front of others, grabbing people by the arm and digging in her fingernails, swollen ego, ego sorry, and sense of entitlement. Kim testified in court about the time that Betty threw a stereo at Dan because he was out late after taking the kids out for pizza with friends. It was all about her. She is selfish. Throw a stereo because he was out late with his kids eating pizza. That's the definition of selfishness. She's not the center of the attention. She's not the center of the world. I mean, why, you know, why have kids? Because when you have kids, you become unselfish. You put your kids first. And that's another example. She didn't put her kids first. She didn't care to hurt them. You know, and, and her parole hearings in 2010 and 2017, she continually blamed Dan and Linda. Her, um, the parole officer even told her, he's like, you're still stuck back 30 years ago. You know, a psychiatrist even asked her, do you realize the ramifications of what you've done? Well, what? Well, what I do? It was done to me. No. She did it to them. That's narcissism at its finest. That's selfishness. Instead of letting somebody go and and learn from it and go on with their life. And she had a boyfriend. She even had a boyfriend. Okay. But it was a problem for Dan to have one. Now, she had one that lived with her. And his name was Bradley, I believe. I'll look it up and make sure. But... She had a boyfriend, and her kids caught them having uh, taken a shower together. She had a boyfriend, and that was okay, mind you, and he lived with her. He was actually one of the ones that went to Dan and Linda's house and, and found Dan and Linda dead. Um, so she had a boyfriend, and that was all right. She could do what she wanted to do, but Dan couldn't. And now I'm not taking up for Dan, and I'm not saying he's innocent, because if he had an affair, that's wrong. Like I said, it's wrong. And, um, you know, it's wrong. It's selfish. It's the pit of me of, it's epitome of selfishness to go and obviously murder somebody. You know, you, you figure you're stating the obvious here. It's, it's selfish. You know, her and her boyfriend went to, um, Went on a vacation before she murdered him. And then she got her papers. Well, she 
didn't want the kids. She said, well, I don't want the kids until I, I'm in good financial standing. You're $16,000 a month <laughs> and a 600 and something thousand dollar home and three cars and you're not financially stable? No, that's not what it was. She was using the kids to, um, to hold things up. She was using that. And then Dan had offered her before she murdered them. Dan was offering her visitation and custody of the children. And then, you know, once she got that, but it was conditional. And I mean, I don't blame Dan. Look at her actions, driving her car through his front door, um, leaving her kids off, at, uh, dropping them off at the front steps, um, digging her nails in him, locking him out of the house, um, throwing stereos at him, all these things. And people wonder why it was conditional. I mean, you, you can't really, really wonder why it was conditional. You can't. I mean, Dan was scared. Dan and Linda was scared of her. And when he was offering her visitation and custody, that was the end of it. You know, there was nothing else to for her to hold on to, for her to cause trouble with, because she was getting ready to get her kids back. But then she couldn't stop leaving messages, so she was getting a contempt of court order on her. So, you know, oh, well, then this is over. I mean, because I have nothing else to fight about. I, I'm getting my way. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go over here and murder him right quick. And then I, I can claim I'm the victim. That's not, you, you can't do that. Well, you can, but then you're a narcissist. You're a narcissistic psychopath. If, if you do things and you don't take responsibility for them, uh, you could be narcissist. You very well could. You know, you you just, <laughs> there's so many things in this case that shows that she's narcissist. And me dealing with a narcissist, I see it. I see it so much. And, you know, you, you can't bring, you can't say, well, okay, well, she's a victim of her upbringing. Well, yeah, if you want to stay in that victim mentality, and that throws it right back into she's a narcissist. Because you can't live your life and blame everything you do on somebody else. Well, my parents were mean, or my parents were bad, or I had a bad childhood. Okay, well then, what does the Bible say about that? Romans eight twenty eight says, all things work out for our good. If we allow the Lord to heal us, or if we take steps in order to um, get healed, it don't just magically land in our laps. I mean, you know, the, everybody, the, everybody comes across people who do them wrong, you do. It's part of life. You come across good people and you come across bad people, but you make the choice and how you're going to respond to that. You're going to make the choice to let it go. I'd rather have peace. I'd rather have peace and go on with my life than to sit there and sulk and play out to be a victim when I'm not. I'm responsible for my own choices. I'm responsible for the things I do. I'm responsible for the things I don't do. It's all a part of growth and healing and learning. Yeah, people hurt you. People's hurt me in my life. But I didn't get up and murder nobody either. You don't do that. You just don't. She went out and bought a Smith & Weston pistol and filled it with hollow point bullets on purpose. Hollow point bullets are made to cause the most internal damage, and she was, tra she was a trained shooter. She took classes in high school, so she didn't go in that home that morning and just blindly shoot. She knew exactly how to aim the gun, and I was right. Her um, boyfriend's name was Bradley Wright, so, um, yeah. She also set Dan's clothes on fire, poured gasoline on them, and lit those bad boys on fire. Kim also testified to this in her mother's trials. If anything, I would hope to learn from this how not to waste my life on grudge, grudges, hatred, and anger. Look out for the signs of a narcissistic person and run. Betty ruined her life and her children's lives and hurt the people who loved Dan and Linda. Your thoughts, leave them in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and give this video a like if you enjoyed this video and its content. We will end this video with Colossians 3.15.
and let the peace of Christ in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Thank you for watching.